Hi everybody, Z Earth Star Healer here, and today I'm really excited to bring you episode two of Oracle Medicine Reports. And today I had the great pleasure of actually working with not one but three clients. And on Wednesdays I schedule my sessions so that they're only 45 minutes long, and they're more of these um, interview style question and answer sessions. But as the day progresses, sometimes these energies take us even deeper, and so. Today, I was so uh, mystified by the alignment that um, was all of these clients. And so I was inspired to make this video and I'm really excited. I think a lot of you are going to resonate with this information. So this episode is called The Code Keepers. And the reason why this episode is called this is that all of my clients today were actually code keepers of a very specific frequency. And um, the first client I had, our session was around her birth and her uh, caring of her newborn baby, who is, I think, now four or five months old. And she found that oftentimes she was going into these states of almost violence to protect herself and her child, even if her partner wasn't being outrightly you know, negative or anything. It was just something that was spurting out on her. And so usually in these situations, we think that it's probably responded to a past life situation that is being triggered by the current lifetime. And so she is responding or reacting, acting out the energies from a previous lifetime. And so as we were working on her, these really profound energies started coming in and I could feel kind of this field or a memory of how humanity used to treat birth and mothers and newborns and is completely different than how we perceive birth and new children in our society now. And I feel like this is always such a pertinent conversation to have and I'm always so honored and so pleased to work with mothers because these codes, they come in and they are so beautiful. And so in the middle of our session, we were just literally both crying and the beauty of the true original codes of what birth is meant to be. And so I will try to describe these energies that were witnessed. And so one of the emotions that she was feeling is around the fact that she did not feel like her partner respected her. And there were situations where this patriarchal condemning energy would come out like, you know, you should do this or do it like this, do it this way. And even though her partner didn't mean to express these energies, her body would get really triggered by it and react kind of out of uh, proportion to the trigger itself. And so as we went into this, um, this energy, we realized that it was actually her ancestors who all are just basically fed up with, um, you know, being property of men in the past and having to be housewives and being told that their only value is in, you know, being at home and often actually being degraded for that. You know, you don't make any money or you're just kind of, it's this undertone of the woman is useless. And so she felt that anytime her partner would express, you know, any level of, um, what's the word really I'm looking for? Of being condescending she would react kind of extremely and she would just get frozen and she would get so angry she wouldn't know what to do and so we went into her ancestral line and began to work with uh, her ancestors to dissolve those energies and to bring in the fact that you know the woman's belief that we are disempowered is actually what is allowing that reality to exist and that actually when women begin to align with her creative power of birthing, of her sense of worthiness, of being that birther of life, then that actually empowers her to stand in a frequency that no longer allows that energy to come in. And so we begin to explore the worthiness around motherhood because she felt this anxiety over the last few months that she didn't deserve to rest. She said that she was really tired but she didn't feel like she deserved to rest because she always felt like she had to like do something or earn money in order to gain value. And this was very absurd to her because she was literally breastfeeding this newborn baby. 
and she wouldn't she couldn't even allow herself to rest because she didn't feel worthy of it and i think that a lot of women feel this way so we're going to go in and dissect this planetary curse so as we went into this energy, we found that the antidote to that lack of worthiness energy is simply the recognition of the immense power held within being a woman and being one who gives birth to new people. So we're literally bringing a soul from a different realm building a whole new physical body inside of our own body and then allowing that soul to transverse through a different dimension into our body and out into the physical reality. Now, that in itself is just so miraculous. And as we went into that vision, I saw how in the original genome of Gaia, I'd like to say, in the ancient times before the false matrix, before the amnesia set in, um, the bringing in of new souls was something very sacred. It was something that we deliberated over greatly, we contemplated over greatly, and we had a deep reverence for because we understood that we're literally creating not just a new person or a new body, but an entire timeline for experience. Now, that meant that even before the child was conceived, the mom, the dad, and the whole village would begin to pray and be in this state of prayer to the other side to find the perfect soul to come into that family. And when the baby would be conceived for the entirety of the pregnancy, the mother would actually pray for the most beautiful life and the most beautiful timeline for the child to experience. And this prayer, because as the souls are coming into physicality, this portal actually opens from the other side. And it's through the beautiful prayers and the beautiful space that the mother and the community is holding that actually allows, you know, heavenly frequencies and heavenly beings through into our world. And so as we saw these visions, I realized that this is really deep because, you know, currently, I feel that most people do not have this awareness. And so when they make a baby, oftentimes it's out of, you know, their own sense of lack, their own sense of fear, or their own desire to fulfill a part of themselves. Instead of thinking about the entire timeline, the being that they're bringing through are going to have to live. And so we have a whole generation of people who were not brought in through prayer, whose life was not initiated through this sacredness and so you can see how then those people were born into this mundane lifeless reality where they're basically told that they have to work for 50 years and then you know retire when they're 65 or 70 and then you know then their life force will have been drained by the false matrix and they would not have experienced you know the amount of magic and joy and creation they could have experienced if all people were so in reverence through the stages of creation. And so I saw that, you know, the first two years when the baby is out of the womb and in the world is actually an extraordinary time for the mother to hold space for the soul to come into the body fully. And this is supposed to be the role of the mother and the community and the fact that in our society, we have mothers going back to work within weeks of giving birth is redonkulous. <laughs> and it's no, and then it really makes sense as to why, you know, people have amnesia and have such a hard time remembering who they were before they entered this reality is because that space was not held for us when we were born, when we were crossing over. And in fact, you know, I feel that this destruction of the bond between mother and child has really been a key component in the amnesia curse that is placed over humanity. And so when a mother remembers that bringing forth children and new beings from one realm to this one, it is literally the reflection of God of the perpetuation of life itself and that there is nothing more worthy of support more worthy of prosperity and more worthy of being nourished than that act of miracles itself 
And unless we as a society can begin to heal our relationship to the birthing process, to the creation process, we're going to have amnesia in our world. We're going to have trauma. We're going to have people living out completely unfulfilled lives because the intention for their creation was not sacred from the beginning. And of course, at any moment, a grown being can go back and do that quantum healing on ourselves, as a lot of my clients are choosing to do. But imagine a child growing up in a reality where they didn't have to go back to their birth to heal because their birth was just from the very beginning of even before conception, a beautiful ceremony of reverence to life itself. And this is what is possible. This is what is written in the living genome of Gaia itself and its humanity that must realign with that frequency, with that reality, if we want to continue to co-create with this beautiful planet. And so I want to move into the next client that I had today. She has had horrendous headaches since as far as she can remember, even when she was a child, she remembers having tantrums and then crying and just then immediately having a headache that's just so bad. And it's pretty much been on and off and pestering her her entire life. And so as soon as we entered the medicine space, I had this horrific energy come over me who was like screaming, mama, mama. And it was a terror. And it wasn't a screaming for her earth, for her human mother. It was a scream of terror for her earth mother, as if her soul entered this realm and felt the agony of this destruction that has been plagued upon her and how this frequency of magic has been dwindling through all of the portals that have been shut down by the military and the fallen religious practices. And so because her energy field was so sensitive and that this um, state of disconnection and pain that the earth and a lot of humans are in is so great. Having the headaches was basically the only way that she could actually block that frequency out and to keep herself from just falling into a pit of horror and despair all the time. Um, so as we worked with this energy, I realized that the headaches are actually connected to this point in the center of the heart and as well as the womb. And that as we worked on releasing fear from the womb, that her headaches would actually subside. And so as I tuned into a higher frequency field of her light body, I saw that she was deeply connected to the original genome of Gaia. And when I say the original genome, I really mean this higher vibrational experience or existence of her. So let's say that, you know, there is the perfectly unwounded version of a person who is just bright and beautiful and vibrant. And then there's a person who's gone through, you know, all sorts of traumas in this physical life. And so their light has been dwindled and they look, you know, a little bit disheveled. So it's always the same with the earth. There is a perfect um, expression of her in a higher frequency rate. And I access this energy through the word Lemuria, um, of remembering the ancient motherland of when all of life was thriving and in connection with the divinity of all that is. And so when I tuned into energy, I felt that she had the coding of that frequency in her energy body. And one of her roles then was to actually anchor that frequency back into the earth. And that's when I realized that there are people on this earth now who are frequency keepers, code keepers, or magic keepers. And they may feel that they've always been different or weird, that nobody really understands them, or they might even feel like they're existing in a totally different realm than other people. And even though society will call them misfits or solitary or loners or weirdos, the truth is these are highly sacred people that are so valuable because they're keeping the earth alive. And by that, I mean all of these cities and military bases and buildings that anchor this energy of death on this planet 
they all destroy the energetic integrity of her body. Imagine you have just calcium deposits coming out of your arm and metals growing out. Your energy wouldn't be flowing in the pro body properly and your body will start to die. And unfortunately, in the case of Gaia, of our planet, the level of consciousness on this planet has sunk into such a low level because there are so many of these anchors all over the planet that are holding her in a non-life frequency of a death frequency, meaning completely severed beyond the 3D, severed from higher dimensions, severed from living life force energy, severed from higher consciousness. And so there are people who are born who almost are memories. I feel that they are living expressions of the earth itself, meaning the earth actually created them or birthed them out of this intention to heal herself, almost as if we are her repair cells or her nervous system cells or her um, uh, damage patrol. I think there's an actual word for that. It's not coming to mind right now. Um, like the killer T cells, you know, like the immune system. That's it. So a lot of people are born directly from the womb of Gaia as the code keepers, as her own expression, a spurt of this magic energy to keep herself alive, almost like this resuscitation. And so these people are born with a very clear connection to the ancient magical realms. You might feel a deep connection to the fairy realm or the elf realm or, you know, plant medicine might call to you. You might feel a connection to the mineral kingdom or the elements um, or the weather or the plants. And it's almost like you have this telepathic capability to communicate directly with nature itself. And this is something that always comes very naturally to you. And it's like you don't understand why people don't feel the earth and her pain when they litter, when they cut down trees. You just don't understand. And there's such a deep angst and anguish and terror that lives inside the body that we are coming to bring to the surface and we also want to empower this awareness of who you are and your power and what you're really here to do as a code keeper so the same with my third client today just feels like there is such a deep connection to these magical kingdoms of the earth that even existing in the false matrix feels ungrounding and painful and chaotic. And sometimes, you know, these people, you find it hard to be grounded in the city because you're not meant to. Your energy is meant to be protected and cocooned so that you can do your work here on the planet. So that you know, when the time is right, these codes that actually emit from you and radiate and reawaken major realms on the planet that have been asleep for a long time, like the portals, the portal systems that allow us to travel around the planet as interdimensional beings and allow us to communicate with the magical creatures of this planet. Um, and so I want to just create the space also to ripple out this healing frequency um, and actually, I think I'm going to create a sound healing around this for us to connect in with the Gaia consciousness and the original Gaian genome so that we can begin to move beyond and out of amnesia because we're not meant to live separated from nature. We weren't created to live believing that we had no telepathy and no psychic abilities and no connection of living awareness to our reality itself. These are curses that humanity have endured for a long time. And here, these superheroes that I have the greatest honor and pleasure of working with, we are holding space and we're carrying the medicine and we're having and integrating the codes that are holding humanity through the breaking of this curse of amnesia. And that is so beautiful and so brilliant. I thank you for being here. You are so brave. I mean, some of you carry just the most exquisite light technologies in your light body. And I'm just in awe every day of this amazing work that I get to do 
walking with you guys and being in awe of your beauty and your grace and your power. And so thank you for trusting me and allowing me to witness you. And um, I'm happy to share the sound healing with you. Taking a deep breath into the body, expanding the belly as you inhale. Bring in these frequencies of original Gaia consciousness, opening up this portal into that memory, that frequency, that place where we are accessing the correct frequency of aliveness on Earth. Allowing those energies to penetrate through the body, into the heart, into the belly, or any other place in the body where we could be holding on to, resisting our emotional response to the destruction of nature. And as we allow those emotions to release, through the recognition that we have the power, we have the connections, we have the living portals inside of our consciousness, our soul, and our DNA to sustain this magic frequency for the human collective while the karma and drama is playing out and just know that we have the magic of regeneration, the magic of directly connecting with the living forces of this planet to heal and replenish nature when the time is intended. And know that as the processors of grief, that we can still allow this divine love that we feel for creation to assist in our transmutation process so that it doesn't feel like we're doing it all alone. We're always meant to be in oneness. We support each other. We send this delightful joy and love out into the field, into the earth, and just know that fully becoming yourself, fully becoming the frequency you are meant to express in this physical body and bringing that medicine fully here on the earth now is the only thing we have to focus on and prioritize. And we are so supported by the living forces of Gaia and of the heavens 
and each other. And we can let go of our belief that we are alone. We fully recognize the amazingness of ourself. frequencies of all of life and divine harmony and cooperation and rejoicing for the beauty of all of creation and this is the frequency that we are meant to exist on this planet it is the frequency that we are holding in our heart and in every step that we take through the garden as we care for our brothers and sisters and this living soil and all of life itself and know that as you integrate this frequency deep, deep inside of us, as we resolve and release the frequencies of trauma and pain from these bodies, we once again birth and create this heavenly reality as this realm was always meant to be. And it's through the anchoring of these frequencies and thank you for your divine service, Code Keepers that we are resuscitating this planet. It's already been done. We are going through the motions of it in the physical. And there's no need to feel terror, to feel as if it is too difficult or you are carrying the whole world on your own shoulders. We are in this together. All that you need to do is sit in the perfection that is yourself. That's all that is needed is to be the perfection and the beauty that is yourself. <laughs> 